So, I think okay. uh, in the first uh, uh, that, uh, in, uh, that we were in the first FTC where Brad in the main account was out with the ones uh, right after two months of the previous FTC. So, what's on uh, this? Uh, what are you doing? Uh, top of the world, it's like a lot of But he cannot uh, keep in touch uh, in person, but she will uh, be around in the chat in the UV. Uh, helping with questions, uh, answering things, so you can send questions and he will probably focus. He will be able to reply in while we are speaking, and at the end we can also take some, some questions. So, the agenda. So, we are going to speak about, as I said, uh, a bit of a uh, subject uh, on the different uh, bits that we have been doing in the last year. Then uh, we are going to talk about what we have been upstreaming and what is also coming. Uh, and finally, some discussion topics uh, that we wanted uh, some feedback from, from the general community. So, the second topic. So, this is a plot uh, of the growing community. One of the ways I, I try to show uh, how it has been uh, growing since the beginning. Uh, we are now uh, more than 460 subscribers uh, in the main list. Uh, the, the plot is a bit, uh, you can see a bit uh, erratic because I was taking samples uh, more often early in the, in the project. Uh, and now, well, now, now it's going up and up and I the samples uh, Another way of uh, seeing the, the, how the interest, basically a uh, proxy for the, for, the, for the interest of the community, is the SWIFT uh, statistics. Uh, here we see uh, the number of users, which of course. Uh, there could be a lot of uh, nice print. It's open to register for anybody. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the virtual attendees. Now, okay. So, uh, sorry for the virtual attendees. Yes, uh, I will continue from here. Um, so we have 500 uh, users now, more than 500, uh, and growing. Uh, you see the, the plot there. Uh, Last year, as you can see in the in the, in the slides, uh, we had um, well uh, uh, an uptake uh, on 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 the last uh, on the last part of the Q4 of the year, uh, probably due to the merge. Um, and another way of oops, another way of, of seeing the progress as well of, or the, of the um, how the community is growing is the regular or 15-day active uh, users in, in the Sulip statistics, as you can see. Uh, we uh, uh, we have a big spike there as well uh, last year, and then uh, we have now about 70 uh, regular uh, users. I would say in the in the Sulip chat. So, so it's quite uh, there's quite an interest, I think, from the overall community. And also in the statistics, we had 8,000 messages in Sulip in the last year, which probably is not <coughs> not much compared to uh, others uh, other places. But yeah, it's it's, it's active. We have also been growing the core team. We call the core team basically the people listed in the, in the maintenance entry. Uh, and recently, uh, uh, we have we have added uh, a few things in that list, which we will talk briefly about them later. Uh, in particular, I want I wanted to highlight the the new uh, members of the team joining last year. First of all, Beno, uh, who has been working on the Pininit API uh, and the field projection IPC for for the Rust language. Uh, we uh, well, he, he has a talk on on the Pininit. Sorry, he has a talk on the Pininit API in the Rust MC. So please uh, go to see his uh, talk uh, on Wednesday. Um, we have also Andreas, who has been working uh, for quite a while now on the Rust NVMe driver, trying to push it upstream, trying to convince maintainers uh, uh, that is uh, a worth uh, endeavor, uh, as well as the null block driver. And finally, uh, Alice has joined as well uh, last year. And uh, as you may have seen uh, in the mailing list, she, uh, she just sent uh, last week the, the Android, uh, the Rust uh, Android binder uh, driver RFC, uh, which, is, uh, which was, in fact, uh, one of the first uh, things we worked on uh, back years ago. And she has been taking it from really, really experimental prototype to actual uh, working uh, and everything. <laughs> She also has a talk, and Andreas as well has a talk on the Rust MC. So please come to the Rust MC. If any of these topics are interesting for you, please go to see their, their talks. Also, we have uh, past series submitters as another way of showing uh, how many people is contributing. Uh, these are people that have actually sent uh, patches to, to, to the, our mailing list. 
uh, of course, there are others that are not listed here uh, that have given reviews, uh, you know, uh, reported uh, bugs, etc. I'm sorry if I didn't list uh, everybody. I, I hope I got everybody. <laughs> then we have also, uh, perhaps more importantly, for for uh, for this talk um, and part of uh, the, the feedback that we want to get is that maintainers have been getting involved as well from the kernel community. For example, I will give two two examples. Uh, one is the Kenyan maintainers uh, got even their their you know in the in the in their maintainers entry they got the the files listed explicitly. Uh, already, so this is in mainline, uh, and they take uh, care of those uh, files. This is what we would like to see um, uh, happen. Uh, the goal is that we, well, because otherwise it doesn't scale. The goal is that we uh, start getting Rust files in, in uh, or maintainers maintaining their own Rust uh, subsystem uh, side uh, and growing uh, from there, uh, rather than because this is a common question. Rather than you know um, maintaining everything in the Rust subsystem, which was never the the, the, the goal. The Rust subsystem is meant for well for the beginning. A bit of everything, uh, but then uh, the idea is that the Rust subsystem takes care of core things that other subsystems uh, do not do not take care of. We also got uh, as another example, the second example I have here, we have Matthew Wilcox, who has uh, said very recently as well, I think one week or two weeks ago, uh, Matthew said that uh, I'm happy to commit to keeping the Rust implementation updated as I modify this implementation of Folios, but I appreciate that other maintainers may not be willing to make such a commitment. So this was in the context of the discussion of how we keep, uh, you know, the abstractions in the in the Rust side uh, in sync with what the C side is, is is doing. So, for example, him is taking the lead and saying, "Well, I will just uh, do it, uh, and I uh, uh, and I will take care of that," which is useful in certain cases where we need to, you know, there are certain uh, technical details where you we don't have a way to uh, automatically maybe see a mismatch between the two sides so there is really someone at least right now that needs to know that if you are updating one of the sides you need to update the other um, in particular for example we want to introduce perhaps comments uh, in the c side to warn people modifying that code that there is already an abstraction on the right side because this is really the, the uncommon case right now it's very very really rare to, to to have a rust abstraction so it's very easy to me is that well you are touching some some c code Somewhere and you are uh, not modifying the the, the, the Rust side, right? Uh, hopefully, this also uh, gets uh, easier to solve when all we start moving all the files uh, from the Rust uh, kernel crate into the uh, spread. Basically, put them in the right places all over the kernel tree. So uh, I want to mention, of course, the sponsors and the industry support. So first of all, uh, I want to thank you, uh, ISRG and OpenSSF, because they are sponsoring financially uh, the project. Uh, ISRG in, in particular within their uh, proximo um, effort uh, about bringing memory safety to the critical infrastructure uh, that is used by, by the internet, basically servers, etc. Uh, and then we have in the second, third row, and uh, Sulip as well in the bottom, we have all the companies that have given us uh, a statement of support, um, a public statement of support that we have in the web page, as you can see in the, in the link is there. So these are all the companies that have stated publicly that they want to see uh, Rust in the kernel and that they are uh, they are interested in seeing Rust in the kernel as seed. As you can see, we have quite a few big names uh, already uh, piling up, and I want to thank you uh, uh, all those companies really uh, and, and the engineers behind them pushing their managers to to uh, to get through, you know, uh, legal etc. to to get this happen. Yeah, so I, I want to highlight the, the ones that we got last year very quickly. Uh, ISRG, uh, of course, they are a sponsor, but they also gave us uh, a statement of support. You can read there. We also got Samsung. Um, Samsung uh, is uh, employing uh, Andras, who is working on the NVMe driver again. Uh, and they uh, seem uh, interested, as far as I understand, on, on, on getting the NVMe driver returning to us to, to work and be a stream uh, maintained properly. Uh, also Cisco, Cisco is interested uh, in, in Rust and uh, we have um, Ariel uh, from Cisco, Cisco employs Ariel and Ariel is working in PASLFS mainly uh, and they are interested in uh, interested in, in having that in, in mainline. Then we have Collabora as well, Collabora gave us uh, very recently a, a statement of support um, and as far as I understand uh, and I hope I don't get this uh, wrong, um, 
they have an interest on, on video for Linux uh, in Rust and uh, Codex in particular. Uh, yeah. So so I don't exactly know the details on on the, how it will uh, it will go. We were discussing in Cangrejos, which I will mention later. Uh, this uh, how to how to uh, get this into into upstream. As usually for for all these uh, different projects and and. Uh, companies we we see a recurring theme which is we want to get this into the kernel uh, what do we do how do we get there uh, so yeah and daniela meda is the person sorry daniela meda is the person that is behind colabora uh, doing the, the codex in rust we also have distributions distributions uh, like um, uh, ubuntu ubuntu uh, so they have very early, I will say, they have very early uh, started to prepare the, the... We were not expecting that they were so uh, quick to, to, to prepare, uh, uh, you know, packages that you see there uh, that you can now install in your Ubuntu uh, uh, distribution if you use it. Uh, packages with the compiler, with the, with the tools that we need, so that you can just compile the, the for example, Auto3 modules, uh, written in Rust, very easily uh, in Ubuntu. So we were not expecting, uh, uh, personally at least, I was not expecting this to happen so soon because again, the, the Rust support is still experimental, it's been, still been, uh, we are still streaming the, the basics of, of, of everything. Uh, but the one to take took the lead, uh, Andrea, uh, Rigi, uh, uh, took the lead on, on doing that and, uh, and now we have packages there. I don't know if they will enable it for the LTS, probably not, I don't know, uh, but, uh, but we will see. But the idea is that, and I hope other distribution too as well, we contacted other distributions as well, uh, they have not, as far as I understand, packages uh, so far, but we contacted other distributions and they are willing, the, mo the major ones at least that I talked to, they are uh, willing to, to support something like this as well in the distributions in the ways that fit their distribution. So on the, from the perspective of the cost of maintaining these packages um, or these uh, extra packages uh, should, should be fine for them, basically. at least the major distributions. Maybe minor distributions or small distributions may have a bigger trouble perhaps on, on maintaining uh, the packages if they have a, a big uh, workload already. But for the major ones, uh, I think we are, we are in the clear. Uh, let's, see, let's see if I don't, this doesn't appear. Maybe I can read it there. So where is the community project support of so where is the community project support for Rust, of Rust? Companies are, are well and good, but Linux is supposed to be approachable for hobbies developers too. Yeah, so so the first part of the presentation, um, maybe uh, I don't know if it was after or before the, the mic uh, uh, started to work for them. But the first part of the presentation, uh, we were talking about how it's growing the, the general community, basically, the, the non-commercial, if you will, or, or, or hobbyist uh, side. So if, if anybody wants to join, uh, please, uh, the answer I, I would recommend is join in Sully because this is where the, most of the uh, action is and where you can get help. So sorry, so Cangrejos, Cangrejos is, a, is, a, is a conference or a workshop that we have been doing for three years already. Uh, one online, only virtual, and two in, in person. Uh, it has been great. I really appreciate and I really want to thank you, all the people that trusted me to, to come in person, basically, <laughs> in, into, into Spain uh, to, to meet. Uh, and we have had a, a very nice time. Uh, we have here 2022 in Oviedo, Spain. Uh, we have some, you may recognize some faces uh, from the photos. Um, yeah. And then we have uh, last year, which was two months ago, uh, one, five, six, six weeks ago uh, where we have uh, we have had uh, one close by uh, as well Gijón in the north of Spain and uh, yeah we were very uh, it was very very productive uh, people got uh, I think uh, they really enjoyed the experience uh, yeah and I, I understand that this is very hard sometimes for for some of them especially in the north of Spain it's not a easy trip but I want to thank you uh, all of them uh, thank all of them all for coming. Uh, if anybody is interested in coming, uh, if you are a maintainer or you have a particular thing, uh, please let us know. Uh, so far, the, the event, uh, or, or probably in the future, if we keep doing it in a personal capacity, it's invitation only. But really, if there is a maintainer that is really interested in coming, uh, please let us know. Uh, I try to invite everybody that I know that is interested in Rust. But if I miss you, uh, please just let me know. Yeah, so 
We also got another uh, news. We also got uh, a website. Um, it was not there last year. Now we have it uh, this year. Uh, the domain is rasforinus.com. I have put in the left side the, the menu, which I will go through very quickly. And we have uh, the first part that you see in the top. We have documentation and resources on the project itself. Uh, things like the Rust version policy, which we will talk about in the talk, the branches, or we will also talk uh, backporting, etc., etc. There is this could be, or part of them could be perhaps in the kernel tree, as in the documentation folder. But uh, for the moment, at least uh, some of those things we, we keep there uh, because it's uh, it's a bit uh, not just easier to update, but also it's, it, it depends. It, it, sometimes it's a fuzzy line on, on what it should be. For example, the contributing one that you see there, the, the second uh, entry, is currently our our P entry in the maintainers uh, file. Is basically our, our maintainer um, uh, profile. Uh, there is a, a maintainer entry profile or, or something like this. It's in the kernel. Not. I think it's only five assistants that have it <laughs> so far in the kernel. But uh, yeah, we we point to there. So if you have a web page, you can point to the web page a URL. Um, and that's also fine. So yeah, please, if you are interested in the project, I really recommend reading those pages because they are short and to the point, and they describe some of the FAQs, uh, many common questions that we have had over over the, the years. And we try to every time we get a question, we try to add more more information there to to, uh, to help. Then we have sub projects. Uh, the sub projects uh, that we have so far are Kalint and Pininit. Both of those have again uh, talks in the Rust MC this year. So please go uh, to see the talks. Um, then we have tools. Uh, tools are third-party projects, uh, but the pages and all these projects, the sub-projects, the tools, and the users, all these sub-pages are maintained by the actual maintainers or, 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 or leaders of the project. Okay, so we are not maintaining them. These are projects that have committed to maintain that page uh, for us in our web page because we want to showcase um, the things that are getting ready uh, for, for Rust in the kernel. For, for example, there you have Cosinet for Rust and Rust C code and GCC, which is the backend in the in the main uh, Rust compiler um, to, to go through GCC, the GCC backend. Then we have users. Users, what we call users, is simply use cases. Uh, you can call them use cases uh, for Rust support in the kernel. So you see there the NVMe driver, the Nullbrook driver, Android, the PuzzleFS, Again, uh, we will be adding more as, uh, because we don't want to, uh, we could list all the things that we ourselves, that we are aware of, but we prefer that the maintainers are the ones that, uh, the maintainers of those projects are the ones that uh, maintain their own sub page in, in the project. And of course, when Rust in the kernel is not a prototype anymore, maybe it doesn't make sense to, to keep all those users because it will be used uh, in many places, hopefully, or that's what we hope. But for the moment, we think it's a nice way to showcase what is being done, the major project that we have in the kernel and they are not yet all of there uh, but we will also speak briefly about that so uh finally uh, and i have a scroll there in the screenshot uh through the links uh, so if you scroll on the page it's maybe easy to miss if you scroll it's a scroll bar, but this is to me still if you scroll there are a lot of links um yeah, that we point to other other uh, interesting stuff. For example, the conferences, uh, the LWN articles or the indexes that uh, LWN uh, keeps um, about Rust. Yeah, so a, a bunch of stuff, but uh, yeah, it's really interesting. As an example, I have two screenshots. As, as an example, one is the Cosinel for Rust one that Julia is maintaining, uh, and that we I will briefly uh, mention later. So you see an example of what is a sub page there and what we maintain. Something simple. Another one is uh, the, the results from Andreas, the early performance results from Andreas. Uh, so we have graphs and plots that you are probably very interested in, in seeing. Uh, so it's just basically to tease you to, to go into the into the pages and, and look uh, for things. So tools. To get a bit uh, into tools, I will talk about three of them, uh, especially two of them. So the Rust C code and GCC, as I said, this is uh, maintained by Anthony, Anthony Boucher. Uh, he works on this backend for the Rusty compiler, which is one of the approaches that we have or will, will, we will have for compiling the kernel with Rust. Uh, this means the official Rust compiler with the front end and everything, everything is the same except, the, except for the backend where we go through GCC using the GIT uh, library. Uh, and current, 
Thank you. Great. Uh, David, the one from David. Yeah. Oh. My experience so far of trying to build code with Rust is that it breaks weekly and that code which used to be fine is no longer absent. Ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> What is the long-term plan for lo the long-term plan for the Rust compiler support as the Rust code slows into the kernel versions that require long-term support? So we already, I, I will discuss, maybe I, I defer that because we have some, some slide on that later. Um, so as I was saying, uh, we have the code, uh, the, the GCC backend. This was already, uh, this is experimental still, but it was close to ready. And last year in Cangrejos, Anthony was there in person and saw us how he could compile and boot uh, uh, the kernel with some changes. Well, now he can do it without source code changes to the kernel. Okay, so this is really a nice progress. It's still, of course, experimental, but I wanted to highlight the main point, which is that uh, you can have a, a, a kernel full with uh, build with GCC and, and using Rust with, uh, with that. Of course, again, a prototype. We will it will take maybe another year. We don't know how long to get into production, but uh, we are getting there. Or Anthony, I should say, is <laughs> getting there. Then we have GCC Rust, which is the other approach. GCC Rust is where you want to upstream a front end, a new front end for the Rust language into GCC itself. So you, you will have in the future GCC RS, I think is going to be the name of the binary. So when you type GCC RS, it's going to be your, your Rust compiler that, that is in, included in GCC. So streaming started uh, last year for 13, uh, and they have the plan initial release for 14 next year. Now. Again, this is uh, experimental. I will give a few points that they gave me uh, in a, in a, after this slide. And then we have Cosiner for Rust, which was uh, very recently uh, uh, published uh, and announced or announced publicly. Uh, Julia also uh, uh, was in Cangrejos this year and, and gave us the, the good news. Uh, and yeah, you have the, the report there and she has a talk um, uh, on Wednesday. So please go to see it. Uh, a lot of things, are, as far as I understand, already work. It's already useful for for, uh, for using it in the kernel. Uh, of course, a lot of other things are not supported, but uh, they are they are working on it. So, as you see, basically the pattern that we are trying to showcase here, or what I am trying to say, is that the pieces that are missing, uh, the pieces that you would expect for, for your normal kernel development, are are uh, continuing uh, uh, to be worked on by the, in some cases, by the actual people. That is uh, uh, not us, but the. the the actual report, for example, Julia, that was, of course, uh, uh, is the author of, of Cosinel. Now, for, for these are some uh, slides uh, or, or screenshots that uh, Anthony gave me for Rusty Code and GCC. Uh, you don't need to read it. But essentially, uh, I asked him, can you please show that you can actually do it without source code changes uh, and show the step that you need to, to compile the kernel with GCC right now? So you clone the kernel. You do dev config, you do menu config, and then you you put there a very long. Let me see if I can highlight. Can I? Uh, it doesn't matter. You see there a very long uh, um, command line uh, that you have to pass. It's a, it's a bit long because he has some folders there, uh, nested folders. But anyhow, you have to pass some flags, basically two of them, k rush flags and host Rust flags to configure, uh, to, to give basically the, the path of the backend to the compiler and the and the sysroot. But apart from that, which is essentially, this will be done at some point in Kbuild automatically, we hope, somehow. <coughs> uh, but right now, you can already uh, uh, try that. And as you see in the bottom, it's compiling uh, Rust, uh, for example, a module, the Rust uh, minimal, uh, and it's going ahead. Then we have uh, QM putting uh, and, and loading the that, that, that module that I just mentioned, mod probe uh, Rust minimal, which is one of the, the samples that we have just to uh, smoke test uh, that everything is okay. Um, yes, so there is one asterisk that I should say is that by the time that he went to do this screenshot, there is uh, he had to move forward in the you know the Rust C compiler. He he moved forward in history in the in the, in the, in the branch, so he's using an ILE and he had to. Patch the, the the usual patch that we do to alloc every release that we upgrade the Rust compiler, so he patched it uh, also for that. But it's not a re it's not a change related to Rust code GCC. It's not something that you will need to do. It's just something that uh, I just wanted to mention, just in case somebody tries exactly those steps and it doesn't work because of the alloc uh, change. But uh, yeah, apart from that, is is 
he has some subpages, as I said before, in the website, and he has some instructions um, that you can follow to, to get it working. Very nice. And as you see, he also supports now the, the uh, comment section. So we send the we send the, the support for the comment section because we may want to use it. Uh, for example, Payhole may want to use it to, to uh, see what is the language or who compiled, uh, what language uh, is behind uh, a particular object file. Payhole, Payhole already has, Arnaldo already added when we requested him uh, to do so, uh, to read the dwarf uh, language. Um, at the dwarf as language, I think, is the one. So there is already an option in Payhole, for example, to skip uh, the, the Rust object files uh, because Payhole is also working on, on supporting, uh, you know, the, the features that the, the, of the layout that Rust creates that confuse a bit uh, or confuse in the past a bit uh, Payhole and now it's, that is getting uh, solved. So that Payhole is a bit more flexible on, on what kind of structures uh, it can read. So yeah, but apart from that, for GCC, for this backend, it also works uh, the comment section. Uh, and I, I, it's not really important, it's a min minor feature, but what I wanted to show is that it's actually compiled. Like as a double check, the Rust minimal uh, example uh, is actually compiled with Rust C, as you can see there. It's not that we, it's going through LLVM for, for some reason. Then we have GCC Rust, where, uh, yeah, we, as I said, they are streaming GCC 13. I will not, uh, it will take uh, a long time to, to go through this, but uh, yeah, they are streaming patches. They have a lot of patches to stream to GCC. Uh, they gave me this, also Arthur gave me these slides uh, to, to show what they are working on, uh, what, they are, uh, what is the upcoming work, well, they are, the streaming that they want to do for 14 and the initial plan release. As far as I understand, the initial plan release is very, very minimal. It will only be able to compile, uh, you know, uh, some I think the core library and, uh, and, and minor programs or, or very basic programs, but the, the progress is there and hopefully by next year. So last year they were in Congress as well. And last year they were still uh, uh, dealing with a lot of uh, details. Now, I, as far as I understand, they are way closer to compiling core. For example, they have there the format arcs, built-in macro support and so on. And next year, I hope that they, but this is not, it's my words, huh? it's not theirs. They have not promised that. I hope that by next year we can uh, perhaps for the Rust version that they support, which is not the latest, um, that we can compile STD. Then we have uh, Rust for Linux for Compiler Explorer. This is a project that uh, I was working on the side. Uh, it's, it's a very simple thing, but it's, it can be very useful, I think. Uh, I talked with, uh, I, I talked about it and I proposed it to, to Matt uh, Godbolt uh, about having, basically being able to compile a Rust module in Compiler Explorer. You just type the module there, you copy paste it, and it will show you the output with the flags that we ex exactly the flags that we use in a dev config, basically, and a normal kernel bit. So not the normal user space flags that we use, but the ones that we use uh, in the kernel. So basically, many cases we, where we have been working uh, in the past year, we wanted to see the output, and we, you know, it's sometimes quicker to just put it in, in, in Compiler Explorer, and it's easier to, to figure out what the compiler is doing, playing with flags, play with the source code changes. So we want to have that. And, and Matt said, well, that's a, that's a great idea. I, I gave him a prototype of how it would work because it was a very simple change actually to support it. We discussed how much resources we could uh, put. And he told me that a reasonable set of versions and kernel configurations uh, could be supported. So we could have a small matrix of things that uh, basically that you pick a kernel and, and it will compile it for you. And it's very quick because it's pre-compiled. All the big parts of the kernel will be pre-compiled. So it's basically instant uh, compiling a Rust kernel model. And then you can see what the compiler is doing and what is the output. Uh, it's also useful for training, of course, maybe for talks, etc. So yeah, and ideally, but I don't know when I will have time to work on that, but ideally I also want, and he also agreed that this is a very nice idea, is to, in the, you know, in compiler Explorer, if you use it, there is a way to execute some code rather than just compile it and show you the, the, the output. So the idea is to run QEMO there so instead of executing it in user space, wherever, in the Firecracker or wherever they are using to, to execute the thing, you it in QEMO. And even having an extra window to write a unit script so you can use most probe or whatever that to, to insert it, remove it, and do everything in Compile Explorer. So I hope that's very useful for for, uh, for kinds of stuff. Uh, probably more training rather than, uh, yeah. There is also the things I will not uh, mention, but I, uh, I leave them in, in the slide. We want to have some more features that I, I, I would like to see. Maybe we implement them ourselves. I don't know. But these are things that uh, I think Matt and the team uh, are, are will be okay with.
as far as I understand. I hope I don't misrepresent his, his position or, or he changed his mind. Um, no, Matt, Matt is, in all seriousness, Matt is a very nice uh, person. He was very helpful and on, on, on very receptive of these uh, wild ideas of having the kernel in, in the compiler explorer. And maybe, maybe in the future, when people see it in RAS, maybe you want it also for C <laughs> to, to be able to compile C modules in, in compiler explorers as well. So we have also the documentation. Uh, we are going to have a domain, ras. Dot, dot, uh, sorry, instead of docs kernel or we are going to have a subdomain there, not for the normal documentation slash documents in REST written in RST, but in but for the generated documentation in REST, the one that goes along with the code, which is where actually we have most of our documentation because it's much e better instead of putting things randomly in the docs folder. We believe it's much better to put them near where you want to document. So for example, if you are talking about a type or an API, you put the docs in the very same file. This is how essentially Rust does it, and we are doing the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, the idea is to have those generated uh, docs in a subdomain uh, because they are not the rest ones and it will uh, appear there. So Constantine was okay with this. Uh, I, I have to work on that and finish the, the thing. What I want to have is also, it will be possible to have per tag access. So like in Bootlin, for example, or in, even in the docs, or you will be able to, to select or at least type the URL. We are discussing the field. Uh, type the, the URL to, to see the docs for a particular person. The, doc, the generated docs, there are some details to, uh, to discuss, but uh, for example, what configs do we use exactly because the, the docs are generated for a particular config? Um, what versions, uh, sorry, what the, the top bar, to have a top bar to, to select the version rather than type in the URL and things like that, but they, they are details basically. Uh, one way or another, uh, we will have this domain so that people can see the docs much, much more easily. Sometimes it goes forward, sorry. So mitigations, yes, mitigations. And we have, uh, we have not much time. When is uh, finishing at the top of the hour? I think so. At the top of the hour? We haven't, yeah, yeah okay, okay. So mitigations, we have uh, mitigations uh, being sent. You can see the, the details in the, the slide, but essentially uh, for Red Pauline, SLS, uh, and, and Red Hank, or Red Hank, uh, we can uh, basically the object tool warnings go away uh, if you put those two pieces together, and hopefully we get them uh, in mainline soon. Also, Ramon sent me uh, this text on CFI and kernel CFI support. He has been working on the Rust compiler to to uh, make that work, and uh, he is getting there as well. Uh, he's close to to being ready, and as far as I know, already. Uh, but I know if it boots already, uh, I think it boots, but I don't want to get too many uh, details. I don't know exactly the status, but he, he is actively working on it. So review documentations, recommendations, review recommendations, a document that Botun is uh, uh, is working. Botun is here. You can also ask him uh, in person. Sorry, I, I don't have much time. But it's a document that we want to write and publish, uh, make public. Uh, we have it. We are working on it, but or Botun is working on it. But uh, at some point, we we want to make it public and reviewers can essentially it's a list of things that you should check when a patch is submitted and how to review it. And I, we want to do it especially because we think it's helpful for other maintainers in the kernel that are going to start reviewing these uh, Rust patches, what the things uh, they need to look for. So in the beginning, I think it's, it's going to be useful for them. Then a bit of branches, you can see more details on the, on the URL, but we are deprecating the Rust branch. The Rust branch is where we had all the code we worked for the last three years. Uh, now, uh, basically, it's, it's frozen now. Uh, it's not, uh, we don't use it anymore uh, because the latest major user that we uh, are aware of, at least, the NVMe driver from Andreas, is already ported into Rust Next. So there is no more major users that we are aware. Of, so it's deprecated now. We will keep it there, archive, but uh, please don't use it anymore. And we are also introducing a new one. We, room, we remove one, we introduce one, which is the Rust the branch. Um, it's intended to, like, a sort of, uh, Experimental, very quick, uh, rebased all the time uh, branch that Potion uh, maintains. Uh, yeah, uh, rather than the Rust Next, which has most constraints because it's in uh, in Linux Next, it's merged into Linux Next. So upstreaming, very quickly, we did some initial merge, as you know, with very, very minimum support for Rust. It's very, very minimum the support we added in 6.1. And in 6.2, 6.3, et cetera, we started to put abstractions in, for example, for the synchronization primitives. Uh, we incremented the, the Rust versions, etc. But the main point here is that 
why we are doing it like this. We, we have been essentially taking the Rust, the, the things that we worked for the last years in the Rust branch, and we have been porting them into the Rust next branch, redesigning sometimes the API, iterating on them, because over those few years, we learned some more things. We learned a new, uh, new, new, new ways of doing things, fixing also, uh, you know, uh, some of these issues, uh, if they appear. So we have been interested on that, and then we are moving slowly things into mainline. And we, especially, we go through their maintenance. We go, for those that don't know, the, the policy is that not just that we put things in the Rust, through the Rust subsystem, we actually go to the maintainers, and the maintainers are the ones that have to get, give the okay uh, for the Rust uh, support. For example, the work you, uh, Tejun or Tejun, uh, uh, took it through history. Uh, the work you abstractions and work with Alice to to basically uh, uh, finish the last details and, and put into production. Uh, but that is what that does, takes time. But nevertheless, we are working on other. We have other major work streams. For example, Binder, NVMe, DRM, you know, file systems, Phi, Video for Linux. Those are all things that are being worked on. But they depend on a lot of abstractions that will need to reach the kernel and. This is basically a process. We have like a pipeline where all these things are coming. We are trying to do our best to, 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 to make uh, uh, the critical path uh, as short as possible, but it takes time. But basically what, what we are trying to say here is that even if the things that we have mainline may, may not seem like much, we are doing a lot of work on this side to, to support those uh, use cases and to get them into mainline. Okay. This I will go over. Uh, these are the slides for talks that are in the Rust MC. So please go to Rust MC uh, uh, to, to see what they have been working on. Uh, we have been doing pin initialization. Uh, we have Kaling, which is a tool to, to, to statically, so at compile time, detect context violations. Uh, very, very uh, interesting. So please uh, go to, to see it. It already detected problems, uh, cuts at least one or two problems already that we made. Uh, uh, sorry, issues that we created in the Rust code. So it's very, very interesting. Please go to see that one. Block layer abstractions. Uh, we have been working, of course, on, on the NVMe. As I said, Andreas is working on that. He has presented it uh, in other conferences. Binder, again, the RBC. I already mentioned it in the talk. So please go to see uh, Alice's talks uh, on it. Um, and Carlos, I think, as well. Is presenting, uh, and then we have VFS, which uh, Wesson, uh, who again is in the chat and is uh, 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 responding to questions as I see. Uh, the VFS read-only abstractions are there uh, already uh, sent, and Matthew Wilkos and others are uh, Alviro as well is interacting with, uh, and Christian Browner I think is, is also uh, uh, discussing with uh, Wesson to upstream this, and we have two file systems in Rust, pure Rust, that uses them. And in particular, I don't know the second one, but at least TarFS is written in full safe Rust, so no unsafe code. In TarFS. Okay. So if the abstractions are correct, you cannot introduce some defined behavior. You cannot have a memory safety issue in TarFS. Okay. So discussion topics until the end. Uh, and I, we have six minutes for maybe questions that Wesson has not answered yet, maybe. So we have, uh, we want to ask, so maybe there's no time to discuss, but we want to ask three main things to, to the community. The first one is that we are currently trying to take soundness issues. A soundness issues is as, as I mentioned about the talk, is something that causes, that could make you introduce using only safe Rust code and define behavior, okay? So it means that your abstraction is not wrapping the unsafe code correctly and is leaking away, our, our, even if it's not present in the entry, even if it is, uh, 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 doesn't materialize in a particular compiler or kernel tree, but it's still a way that you could do it, right? So we are still fix that. It's like a, an extra layer of protection over the C side. So C doesn't have that because you, you are, for example, you call a function with a pointer, you are supposed to not pass a bad pointer, right? Um, so in Rust, we don't do that. And we are supposed to fix these things. And we not only fix them in the current version, but we also backport them. So this is still experimental. We are trying to backport them. We have been doing so, so far. Uh, we have not had trouble. Uh, it may be hard in some cases, but as we get more uh, Rust features uh, stabilized in the, comp in the Rust compiler, I think we, uh, it, will be, it will become uh, easier. Uh, about the question that somebody, uh, David, asked, uh, I don't know what he meant about breaking uh, the Rust code breaks. It's not true. If you are working with a stable Rust, a stable Rust, the language guarantees stability, and I have it here in the next slide. This answers a bit the question. The Rust language is stable. It promises backwards compatibility for the stable features. There is some unstable features that we have to use for the kernel, but we are working with the Rust uh, project to stabilize those. And we have uh, a meeting coming up, and we have had meetings in the past about uh, how to deal with all these things. And perhaps 
we want to ask them to give a special support case for the kernel in the beginning. So we can reach a, a point where we can have, for example, a window of versions supported or something like that. We will see. Or at least even if we use unstable features that they promise not to break them right away or they warn us so that we can uh, be ready for the change or change it or they give us a, a window where we can use both ways when and they deprecate the last the, the other way etc et so again I, I don't have much time i want to um finish. sorry okay yeah thank you Gabe. uh yeah that's uh enough. so the main point here is we are tracking the latest version right now because due to the reason that we are using unstable features we cannot use and we have to for example fork the arrow library from the standard library we cannot use several versions i mean we could but it would be a maintenance burden that since there is no entry kernel user right now it's not really important even if when they are there it will take a while to 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 get all these things sorted so the main point here is we are tracking the latest version and that's why we do it uh, some people get confused about this it's something that we would like to see done something uh, only temporarily and in the eventually as the link there in the url explains Eventually, we want to have a window support of Rust versions, uh, Rust compiler versions, right? So, so it's not uh, it's not something that is it's something temporary. Uh, and when we get to that minimum version that is in the future, we will establish the, the minimum version. And finally, it is the last slide. Uh, there is the duplicate drivers exception. So, a few maintainers are open to the idea with experimenting with Rust, but sometimes they want to do it with a simple driver that they already know about, that they already have in C. Uh, so. Upstreaming that driver until everything else is ready, you cannot do that because then you would need to drop, if you don't want to violate the not duplicate driver's rule, you would need to drop the C driver. And it's bad and it's a maintenance burden. And we have been warned by high level maintainers. Uh, I see Greg uh, <laughs> here in the room. We have been told, no, that's a mistake. And, and we actually agree that it's a mistake. But to break the egg and, egg and chicken problem, the chicken and egg problem, we are requesting to, to, to have an exception for Rust and C drivers for a while until you get all the instructions in. And we have also other reasons why we think this could be a good idea and helps maintainers to start with Rust, because otherwise we, we nobody starts if we don't have a way to get the instructions in without breaking also the node dead code rules, etc. So for these other reasons, uh, we have uh, submitted this uh, maintainer summit topic and there is one post there where you can see all the uh, all the details. So that's all. Thanks a lot for, for joining. Sorry for the, uh, <laughs> the time and if we have time for uh, Maybe two questions or three. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and also, also thank you for all the people that sent me uh, the slide, not the slides, but the, the content that I uh, I wanted to present for, for everybody. So I'm representing here a lot of people. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm I'm curious about the GCCRS. Backend. So once we have, we are in the state where we can use GCC to build Rust modules in the kernel. How hard will it be to make that work across all the architectures rather than just the architectures that already have a Rust user space port? In GCC, as well, I, I think Anthony. Well, I think Anthony told me that it's not uh, it's not be a big uh, problem to get to use the different architectures. Actually, the main point of for us to use the Rust code in GCC for the kernel is to access the architectures that maybe LLVM doesn't support. So yeah, so we hope that that's, uh, I, I think he works on Intel. I don't know if he has tried already ARM. Uh, maybe it's too early for him to try several architectures. Right. I, I assume the, like, the five architectures that are most widely used will be no problem, but then we have 20 other architectures that are that have very small user base and don't have a Rust support in user space. So but but you mean in, in, the, in the normal Rust compiler? Right. So yeah, yeah. So, things that don't have an LLVM port and or, or Rust C port. Yeah. So the uh, sorry, I don't know if I understood the question, but, but the GCC code backend allows you to use the other architectures. Oh. Uh, uh, that, that's the idea, basically. The, the idea to have that backend is so that we can access all the architectures that GCC support. Exactly. That doesn't mean, and of course, also to have two compilers to compile the kernel. It's always uh, uh, good to keep. Miguel, hello. Yeah. Um, I want to raise the point of like potential user reachability. What I mean is like, uh, you know, right now, maybe we should start pushing distributions to try to enable Rust in their kernel, especially in the genetic default kernel. You know, right, I, I'm biased on this yeah. topic. <laughs> and so, but projects like, for example, uh, the, the CodeGen GCC or the 
GCC RS, they can help a lot to uh, increase the user reachability because they can provide Rust across architectures. But uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a kernel developer and I'm working on my own, uh, I don't know, file system. And if I need to pick uh, either Rust or C, right now I would just say, well, you know, you know if I write that in C, uh, it will work everywhere across all the distribution. So if we have like uh, coverage for architectures and coverage for distributions, Rust can be a valid replacement uh, for C. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, yeah, what's your opinion? So I, I think we are basically, uh, the answer is we are getting there. The, the one thing is until GCC is ready, I think, uh, un, until we get enough abstractions and a major user merge, uh, I think it's a bit too early perhaps to, to talk about how to reach users because there is no entry use case. Although we have, of course, a Sahilina, for example, a Sahi, uh, the pro Sahi project uh, that already uh, people is using with the GPU driver written in Rust. But of course, that's a very small distribution. Uh, that they can uh, take that. For generic distributions, uh, I think it's still, uh, it's, it will take some months or a year or maybe two, we don't know. But I think we will get that. Uh, I think is the, the answer there. Thanks. Thank you, Andres.